Hello everyone, my name is Justin. Welcome to my YouTube channel and today I am filming a recap video slash discussion video on the men's short programs at the 2022 U.S. National Figure Skating Championships being held in Nashville. I almost said Canadian because I'm watching two competitions at the same time. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I like to break down the top performers and their programs, look at the protocols, but I feel like that's really not necessary today, so it's going to be a short, quick video, kind of discussion style, because some of my friends who I normally get on the phone with after a competition and chat with are at work. Hey, Kanishka. Naomi, I'll call you later. <laughs> so I'm doing this instead. I say that because really it was an amazing night of skating. So many of the top men just brought their A game, like not just technically, but artistically. Everyone skated like their life depended on it. Everyone was very much emoting to the people in the back of the stands, feeling their music, really showcasing their talent to the best of the ability. I made a joke on Twitter that there was some magic in the Zamboni and the Zamboni driver poured it onto the ice during the ice resurfacing because really there's not a lot else to explain how everyone's doing so good because usually at the national championships we see quite a bit of athletes struggling with nerves especially in an olympic year maybe this year everyone just really is hungry for a spot on the olympic team that they just want it so bad and it's so contagious what's going on backstage in the locker rooms can i buy some of that for myself so obviously, Nathan Chen is in first place, a really, really big score of 115. Let me get the exact number, yeah, 0.39. If you're new to national scoring, let me tell you, domestic inflation happens within all national championships. This is quite extreme, probably this weekend actually at the US national championships. So I'm gonna focus more on placements, but the judges really did like Nathan Chen. That's probably one of the best short programs he did all season. And actually it's a much improved from his Skate Canada short program, which obviously was a 180 from what he did at Skate America, the uncharacteristic falls and mistakes. I want to forget about that and hopefully that will not happen again. But we saw the layout, I believe Nathan Chen opened with the quad flip and then closed with the quad lutz toe combination. The axle kind of scared me a little bit. That's not his best jump, though it has improved over the years. And I'm glad the program's changed up a bit because his previous one was not working for me at all. I personally would have chosen a different one, but I'll keep that to myself. And close behind was Vincent Joe, and I've always said Vincent has the ability to be up there with Nathan Chen. He just wants to close that gap between his score and Nathan's, and he's been doing a good job of that year after year. In fact, he even beat Nathan Chen earlier this season at Skate America, if that says anything. But 112, that is huge, but just three points behind Nathan Chen, similar content. We'll have to see how the free program goes. I actually think if everyone skates clean in the free skate that the rankings in the short program may carry on to the free. But that's a big if. There's a lot of quads that are going to be attempted tomorrow and I think Vincent and Nathan will challenge each other. So a lot of quads in the program might mean some unexpected and messy falls. But Vincent Joe, I feel like that was one of the best he skated that Vincent program. A lot of people call it Starry Starry Night. I know we've seen it many times. Maybe I was just extra focused today, but I noticed a little subtle nuances in the choreography that uh, Vincent pulled off really well. So kudos to Vincent Joe, who's been having a pretty good season, minus a competition or two. And then I'd say a good surprise was the third place finisher, Ilya Malinin. Wow, I'm just speechless, skated to an interesting cover of Billie Jean, and I know a lot of people are not fond of covers used as skating programs, but this kind of worked, maybe because Ilya did a really good job of portraying himself as being one with the music, connecting with it, just, ah, oh, everything 
was so deliberate in his program, artistically speaking, and ooh, the technical content opening with quad LUTs. He was probably like, Nathan Chen who? Vincent Joe who? I'm here. And he's so young. I love that he was able to perform the way he did. Beautiful spin positions, like wow, the flexibility. My gosh. And then I love the embellishments on his costume. That was, that's always refreshing to see. I'm looking at the protocols now. Yeah, did a quad toe, triple toe combination. Amazing spins, triple axle. And if there's one thing to note, it's that all of the men in the top three did two quads in the short program. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the new standard in the future, unless you're Jason Brown, who could probably get away with doing one just because his program component marks are so superior. So talk about Jason. He's in fourth place, but wow, what a magnificent performance. I know everybody loves the Sinnerman program, and I like it too. I actually like it a lot, but there was something about watching it at Nationals tonight that just made it seem like magic. Maybe I'm just paying extra attention. Maybe my screen is really clear so I could really see everything, but there is not a spare second in Jason's program. It takes a good amount of talent to continue having speed while doing different choreography and having the depth of edge while performing his jumps to the best of his ability and the spins. Like, oh, sometimes watching Jason's edge work gives me like Patrick Chan vibes. He's just that good. And I say that because Patrick Chan to me is the gold standard of depth of edge in figure skating. And Jason Brown is pretty much up there. The opening triple flip was huge. And looking at the protocols, he got a lot of fours and fives for grade of execution marks, mostly fives actually, just one four, and that was absolutely deserved. I remember watching it thinking that there's probably room for another rotation there for Jason to do the quad, but he played it safe by not attempting, I think he does the quad sao cow in the short program, and you know, he really didn't need it to give the audience a reaction. Everyone was on their feet, triple axle was also good, and let's toe, ooh. And then the step sequence was absolute and pure brilliance. Jason Brown. <sighs> I would love to see him at the Olympics again. And I'd say someone with Jason's experience might be more valuable there than Ilya if the standings were to be the same after the free skates tomorrow. And then we have Jimmy Ma. Jimmy has come such a long way in the past few years with showcasing different sides to his skating. So we've seen him skate to something a little bit more upbeat, contemporary, and something that's very trendy with the youthful crowd to Swan Lake. And while I don't feel like Swan Lake is totally his kind of program, I can't ignore the fact that he skated it so well. His level of commitment was really a 10 out of 10. We love seeing the swan with the ponytail. I know not everyone is a fan of it, but I appreciate it. It is great to see him land the quad toe, triple toe, so clean, and then a triple lutz, just so confident. Spin step sequence level four, commitment level 10, as I said earlier. Top five is really great for him. I believe he was in the top six last year at Nationals, so it's great to see him kind of in the same position. And who knows, with some retirements next season, if it's Nathan Chen or somebody else, Jimmy Ma can move up to be a leading American man internationally, especially if he keeps up this level of performance. And then in sixth place, we have Camden Polkinen. Camden has always been known as such a beautiful, lyrical skater, just lovely glide throughout the ice, beautiful musicality. The problem has always been his jumps. So when he was landing things today, that was so surprising, but it started off with a beautiful quato. Oh, that was gorgeous. And then eked out a triple axle and the combination Ooh, that was a little scary to watch, but the fact that he eat that out, stayed on his feet, and continued on with the step sequence was brilliant. And really, it was after his combination jump that he was just skating out of his body, big movements. People who were probably sitting at the top of the arena in Nashville could probably feel him from up there. So, 
oh, so amazing. So yeah, you just heard me. I talked about the top six. If you haven't watched the replay of the American Men's Short Program, what are you doing listening to this? Go on Peacock. If you are subscribed, watch the replay. Go on YouTube. And let's see, if is there anyone else I want to talk about? No, it's really about those top six. There was really magic on the ice today that some of us are worried that it's going to be a disaster for the free skate, crossing my fingers that it is not the case. Okay, I think I've been talking for 10 minutes now. That's how long I wanted this video to be anyways. Were you excited? How excited are you? Who do you think will come out on top tomorrow? Yes, I'll try to film a video after the free skates as well, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you all later. Goodbye.